The last renewable resource I'll talk about is fresh water. We will never run out of water in general, but most of the water around the world is salty. We can't drink that water without getting incredibly sick. So fresh water, but fresh water is considered renewable. You may think, well, we have the water cycle. There's no way we can run out of it. Yes and no. We can't really run out of it, but we can run out of how of healthy fresh water. We are not good when it comes to pollution and mother nature can filter that water, but so much. So let me put some things in perspective of all the water on earth. About 97% of it is salt water. We can't use it. Two and a half percent of it is fresh water. Now I'm zooming into this fresh water portion of this graph. About 70% of it is stuck in icebergs, in glaciers, in ice, things we can't get to. Another 30% is groundwater. Now, some people, if you have well water, that means the water in your household is supplied by groundwater. Most, eh, I'd say like half of the people in the world are supplied by groundwater, half of them are supplied by surface water. Less than 1% of all fresh water is surface water. Surface water means lakes, means streams, means ponds, which is where the other half of the people in the world get their water from. Here in Montgomery County, nearly everyone gets water from a surface water source. So we don't have that much water. <clears throat> I mean, I have tons of water, but not that much water that we can actually use. So how are we making it, you know, why is it considered renewable? Why is it just not inexhaustible? We always have water. Well, because we take more than the river can handle. So I'll give you an example of California. We know California is going through a drought. This actually has nothing to do with that, but it's somewhat related if you were to look at that issue. And specifically, I'm gonna focus on down here, the Colorado River. The Colorado River runs along the southern border of California, and we have this aqueduct. Uh, aqueducts are used mainly for agriculture or traditionally for agriculture. So this water from the Colorado River is being taken out of the river and supplying homes and farmland in this area. And we do, I mean, there's other aqueducts here, but I really want to focus on the Colorado River. Colorado River is what shaped the Grand Canyon. So a huge river, tons of water, and also a very like ancient river. It's been around forever. But if you look just in this picture, now it's been around for hundreds of thousands of years and the Grand Canyon took a very long time to carve. But you see this color change here between this dark orange and to this like white yellow color. This is actually recent and that's not carving out. That's actually the water level dropping it has been dropping tens, twenties uh, of feet because we're using a lot of this water. We are actually using so much water here in the United States from the Colorado River that poor Mexico, who could really use the water because they are a much drier area, they actually don't even see the Colorado River. This is where the Colorado River ends. Most rivers end in a large body of water, not the Colorado River. It never gets there. Here is an interstate bridge in the background. This bridge wasn't just built like in a valley. No, it was built over a river that used to exist there, but not anymore. We take out so much water in this Colorado River aqueduct in California for the fields, for people. Now there's none left for people downstream of us. And that's why it's considered renewable. If we were to take out less water, then there'd be plenty to go around and to maintain this river ecosystem but we don't. We surpass that sustainable yield. And this is happening around the world, not just the United States. This is happening in many, many different countries. You've probably heard the term water crisis. Well, that's because it is a crisis. There is people who are going without water because other people are using it unsustainably. So again, as a recap, three different types of resources. The inexhaustible, no possible way we can use them all. Exhaustible, we can definitely use them all, and we're waiting a couple hundred thousand years for them to come back. And then renewable. 
renewable resources, if used sustainably, will come back forever. But as we've seen with you know, lumber, with fish, with fresh water, humans can use them unsustainably, making it so that they're no longer renewable. They're not coming back in ways that can sustain human populations for the end of time.